Okay. David, who do we are live now? For us as a team and for me personally, winning the Avana Digital Award gave us the, the drive further pursue our idea and it was the recognition we needed in order to believe that our idea really had value. Junior Achievement Enterprise Challenge Award are very important for young people because uh, they're giving the opportunity to, to the young people to uh, show their skills. We are building business knowledge and uh, marketing and how to make value for the customers and the opportunity to show what we can do is uh, awesome. Well, I think having a mentor from Avanat is really imperative because here are gathered so many innovative and people with willingness to help and uh, even the great boxer need coach. So it's really a good, good one. That's very important because we need the help of them in order to discuss uh, how to overcome these barriers and make a plan to succeed and go further in our startup. I think the most important skills I developed while working on Bvine are thinking outside the box while at the same time knowing our customers well and ba balancing between these two it's a tough job itself. The uh, entrepreneurial skills I have developed working on our idea are invaluable. Uh, these skills have really helped me see the, the bigger picture and really helped me to narrow down the steps to the success that I need to take and the skills I need to have in order to succeed not only with Bvine but with other interests. I, I see that uh, Avanat is a big company but uh, here I experienced a startup environment which really helped people to innovate and grow and uh, do some, some stuff uh, which are really uh, imp important uh, for the environment and, and for the people. The thing I really enjoyed is the inspirational and friendly environment here. I really like that uh, Avanat puts a lot of effort to be people oriented and focused. It's really important and I really like it. The single takeaway for me from this visit in Avanat is maybe you should continue developing yourself and the team and what we are doing. I've had a, a blast so far, uh, even from the, the first night. It was a lot of fun and uh, the, the people here are great. I loved it so far. Learn, live, and breathe. How technology will revolutionize the world of work. Welcome everyone, good afternoon. My name is Salvatore, Salvatore Nigro, and I am the CEO of Junior Achievement in Europe, an organization that serves 4.2 million children and youth in over 40 European countries. We are part of the JA Worldwide family. Today, our webinar is on the road to the Europe Enterprise Challenge, our competition. It's uh, one of our flagship events that we have at Junior Achievement in Europe, and we do that thanks to fantastic partners. One of these fantastic partners with us that has helped us to virtualize uh, the event itself is Avanet. And I will be joined by great panelists. We have Isabel Fernandez, who is the Early Careers Lead at Avanat, and Victor Villen, 
which is the Global Innovation Lead at Avenant. Before jumping on the different presentation, I know you are all thrilled to know how technology is really revolutionizing the world of work. Many of you will be soon entrepreneurs. So by the time you will create your startup, by the time you will enter into the world of work, you will enter in this virtual world of work. So I know you're thrilled to discover it, but we keep tools with the tools that we have today and the tools that we have tomorrow. To me, the most important is really the cultural shift that we need to make and we need to make it in people. So how can we enter and imagine the world of work of tomorrow? Please follow me in a very quick exercise. There is nothing better than your imagination. Can we all close our eyes for 10 seconds? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Have you imagined the world of work? Well, I'm not really the expert. The experts are going to be here with me, but let me also thank um, Eva Ramsey at Avanad and Juan Bosicard, who have put a lot of efforts to make sure this webinar will be great, engaging, and definitely useful, an experience that you will remember. So, without further ado, Isabel, are you there with us? I am, Salvatore, thank you. So, Isabel, where you, we are connecting from UK, and you yeah. can, as you can imagine, I am instead in the south of Spain. So already this is already revolutionizing our world of work. Absolutely. Thank you very much for that introduction. Can you now see my screen? We do. You do. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Salvatore, and welcome everyone. Hi. Um, Really pleased to be joining you. My name is Isabel. I look after our early careers in the UK and work closely with our junior achievement in young enterprise partnerships and also specialise in the kind of use of teams in the workplace. So something I'm really excited to do today is talk to you a bit more about how we at Avenard have adapted to kind of working with ourselves and with our clients to maximise the collaboration tools and techniques that we're using. Um, so I'm hoping today to be able to share three things with you really and so my agenda is not too long. Um, I'm hoping first of all just to have a think with you about what collaboration is and what that means for us in the workplace today at Avenard. I'm going to show you some of the tools that we actually use when we use Microsoft Teams. Avenard, I'm not sure if many of you know, I'm sure some of you do. We are a joint company between a consultancy called Accenture and Microsoft. So we use Microsoft technology, but a lot of the tools I'll refer to can also be thought about with whatever platforms you are using in your own lives and schools and colleges. Um, and then actually, I think most important is thinking like what Salvatore said about the human side of some of this and thinking about how we are able to put some of these tools and technologies and best practices into use when we are actually collaborating with each other day to day from home in what is now probably a lot of you have heard this phrase, the new normal. So if we think about what collaboration is, that's a theme for this webinar. And I'm going to just read out what it says, which is to collaborate is to work jointly on an activity or project with two or more people or organisations to complete a task or achieve a goal. Now, I think my favourite bits of this are the fact that it's two or more people. So collaborating implies teamwork and that it's to complete a task or achieve a goal. They don't have to be big things, but the idea is that by collaborating effectively, you're going forward and you're trying to create a positive, a positive impact, a change. You're working towards something. 
And something that we talk about often in the technology technology industry and at Avenard is helping our clients adapt to become agile, to be flexible. But actually, right now during the global pandemic, everyone's world has changed a little bit. Everyone's having to adapt. And so actually learning to adjust to new conditions and change is something that's going to be very, very important for you as students and young people coming into the workplace but also for us in the workplace already we're all having to adapt and change as well so the first thing i'm going to do is actually show you some of the tools that we are using as part of the team's um, collaboration that we do at avenard so i'm going to share my desktop with you now right so i'm now hoping that you are able to see this team's window that i'm in can you nod if you can see it yeah fantastic victor i can see you nodding um so like i said we use teams for our collaboration at avenard and what i've done for the purposes of today is created a test team called junior achievement test team now what is a team so a team is it can mean many things to you it might mean something you use um you know when you're working in class projects it might mean your football team it might mean your soccer team your hockey team and to us teams is also this great virtual group okay a team is a working group of people so you can be added to many teams you can see i've got different teams on my screen so we're going to be working in this junior achievement test team but you can also see a tech for social good team and these are like i said working groups of people within them you have channels so these are like funnels of conversation so if you think of your team as for example your um your class and then your channels as your filters of conversation so maybe your different subjects um, maybe different projects that you're working on at school. What are some of the things that we do at Avenard at the moment, which makes using Teams fun and collaborative? Well, just to start off with, you can see some examples here, but I'll show one in live time, is when we're posting to each other, we are sharing our thoughts, we're cascading wide scale messages by just typing in the chat in the sort of yeah this chat bit here you can use the app so then you're able to tag and so i'm going to tag my colleague juan here now another cool thing that we are always saying about teams is use it to reduce noise to your emails no one likes getting loads of emails so again you might just want to think about having a good headline so webinar for example here and then I can talk to Juan here and say. Now, what we can do when you're doing these types of posts is you can play with GIFs. Often our clients really love those. Um, you can play with emojis. And one thing that I'm really keen on and a lot of our clients often really like, which I think is important when we're all working from home more often, is sending praise because again, this is a nice way of thinking about sending someone good good vibes even when you're not with them in the office seeing them all the time like you might or seeing them in the classroom day to day so these are a cool couple of things here like you can see up here i've been able to flag this message as important and different people can come and interact with these posts as they want to as well so those are some really basic kind of talking points which actually just show some of the cool things that technology can be doing to help us at work be able to communicate in a way that's not just over email um now 
Another thing that I really like is this planner. This is like a Kanban board and it's a way of starting to show people different. Um, it's a way of basically creating a team to do list. Like I said at the beginning, a lot of collaboration relies upon teamwork. So here what you can see is I've started to create what we are calling the JA planner and I was imagining that I was creating a company and so I have my business strategy, I have my video and I have my marketing. OK, in business we might call those different like work streams or different verticals. So what we were saying here is I had added a task and I would said OK, Juan, I want him to do the proposal, but then I might want him to also do the plan. OK, and I'm going to call it a plan on a page and I'm going to say Juan, I want you to be doing that and I'm going to set him a due date, right? Once I've added that task, what you can see is we're starting to build out a board. Now, if you have access to Teams, I'd recommend you go and play with this. But what's quite cool in terms of, again, thinking about collaborating, teamwork, working from home, is that they will start to build out some charts as well. So if you have a weekly team call, which is something I'll come and talk to about later on, this is a really good idea because you can actually start to view who's doing what in your team, your manager or your kind of yeah, your manager, even in your own enterprise company teams might also then be able to start to say, hey, look, our designer hasn't done much this week. Marketing, what are you doing? But secretary, really good job. So that's another important one, I think, for collaboration. Um, another one that I like a lot is notes. So meeting notes is something that you can hook directly into a meeting so that, for example, you're not all in one room together. You're on a meeting with your team, but you can all collaboratively be working on notes and that can sit within your team as well. And that's something we do often at Avenard. Um, and just on that, a test notebook. This is also called OneNote. And this is like, think about it like your notebook that you have day to day with your pen, but it's for you and for other people. You can share it with them. You can give people access to parts of your notebook and what you can do like you can see here is pin it to this team that you have added your classmates to, for example, and then you're able to actually go and communicate and update each other. Something that's really important, I think, in this era of change and online um, working but not face to face is making sure we're continuing to share information with each other. So there's another one there. Um, something else that I quite like is the form or survey. Now again, it's good to check in how people are feeling given that we are all now at home. Maybe you want to be planning some social activities for your college mates, You maybe for your soccer team because you're not all able to go out and compete in football tournaments in the same way. So again, make sure that you are kind of thinking about getting feedback from people, hearing back from people and creating a form and getting some feedback that way is a really good thing to do and it's something you can share on a wide scale and if in business then you need to actually collate the responses you can go into responses and it will open it in excel for you which then is really good for kind of tracking and being able to take your collaboration forward into creating some solid work deliverables which is what we often call them so hopefully that's kind of a helpful overview of some of those things. Another thing that I like to show and to use often is chat. Now this seems really obvious and actually in many ways this is similar to your WhatsApp and to your even to kind of texting. But what it is, is it's quick fire collaboration with your colleagues. Like you can see here, I've created a group chat and I have named it what that means is that you can start to have quick fire communication with certain people and you're actually really able to um, interact in a way that's sociable but efficient. OK, 
And what you can do is you can jump straight into a video call or an audio call or indeed share your screen like I'm doing now with people who you are chatting with. So again, a really useful quick fire collaboration tool when you're not in the classroom together, you're not in the office together, but everyone's still there at the click of a button if you want them to be. Um, now coming back into my team, something that's really important when it comes to actually delivering excellent work is files. Now we at Avenard still need to be delivering excellent work to our clients, even though we are all working online, right? So what I have done is I have created this PowerPoint deck, which I have put in my team and I'm now going to open up. So hopefully you can see this and what would happen now if Juan is on this call, I would be able to see, for example, um, I might be able to go into my team. Hang on. Come back. Um, so for example, if I'd said to Juan, Please review my document. I could then actually, I would be able to flag that document to him and get him to edit it in real life time. Um, the beauty of this is that I could then actually see and work with this person on changes in real life. Now, one might pick that up, he might not. But the importance here is that ooh, is that I am able now to effectively work with him in live time and see live updates as we go. Now, this is really important because what it means is we continue can continue to be delivering um, kind of work as if we were in the room together. So I can see I'm in here. If I make any changes and I want to track backwards, so if I make changes and I want to think, oh, my um, changes I made yesterday were not so good, um, I need to go back to Friday's version, I can do that without sharing one on an email and then another on an email and then another on an email. So again, a really good live way of working. Um, OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into Teams and we're going to have a think about the actual meeting handling. So if you can see now, you can see everyone on the video, but what you can also see is we're in a meeting and there are some cool things here which I like to draw your attention to. So these three dots are basically your best friends in Teams, OK? So it's a kind of cheesy line that when I was learning to use Teams, one of my managers used to always say to me, but it opens up loads of extra functionality. Um, showing background effects. Now, again, a really cool collaboration piece because like you can see, we've all got the young enterprise and junior achievement background at the moment. And actually, that's a good talking point for when everyone's at home working. You can come in and say, oh, hey, why do you have the beach today? And you could say, oh, well, it's raining in London and it actually is right now. It's storming outside. So, you know, I might later on have a beach background and that's a nice way to be personal and collaborating when I'm in my living room. Um, there we go. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> um, and a few of the other kind of cool things that I think are really fantastic about the meetings is at the moment um, you are able to have the meeting chat going alongside. So that's a really good way to actually start to interact with people on a call without interrupting the speaker. And it's a good way to be sharing ideas as well. Um, another one that I like and I've already called out is the meeting notes. So you can create meeting notes when you're in a meeting and then, like I said, everyone can see those. And I think a couple of the other things is going to be the whiteboard. Now, that's something that's a bit newer. And what you'd have to do here is you go into where it says stop sharing. If I now clicked in this. 
and I open up the whiteboard, what it would do is we'd be able to all collaboratively start to work together and draw together in a workshop. Now, this is something that is really, really key for kind of collaborating as if you were in a workshop with people, as if you were writing on the whiteboards. In Avenal, we've got lots of glass panes where we go and we write on the walls. So again, a really good way of connecting in with your clients and getting imaginative ideas out there by getting people to actually draw on the whiteboard. Um, and that's something that we'd definitely be able to um, demo with, you know, smaller groups of people or even in bigger workshops with clients as well. So hopefully that's given some like good food for thought or some good views of different things that we're doing. What I'm quite keen to do now is go back to the deck and actually have a think about what we are, how we are putting some of this into practice and how we're thinking about using some of these tools. So I'm going to reshare my screen. If you just let me know when you can see this. We can. we can. You can? Fantastic. OK, so now I'm just going to have a, I suppose, I want to discuss what does effective collaboration mean for you? What does it mean for me working in a business? What does it mean if you're in school? What does it mean if you're a teacher working from home? So. Like you can see, research has found that organisations with digitally savvy leaders financially outperform those without by 50% and those with digitally naive employees by 78%. So I really like this graphic here um, that you can see on the screen and basically without going into too much kind of boring um, theory here, there are a there is a theory called self-determination theory. So it's a motivational theory and it's based in the principles of two psychologists, Ryan and Decky. And what they say is that humans have three things that are really important to them. Competence, connectedness and autonomy. Now that's a bit complicated. So in simple terms, what does that mean? It means that they are, as humans, we want to feel able, connected, sociable and independent. We want to feel good at what we're doing and able to check in with each other as well. So what does this mean for us now when we're collaborating in the new world? Well, I think having an adaptable mindset in Avenard is something that we've all really, really had to pick up on and think about how have we done this? Well, the new online world means that actually we need to think about doing things in new ways. At Avenard, we have something called Do Good Friday, which is where between 12 and 1, we are able to um, do a go out and, you know, think, OK, I'm going to close my laptop. I'm going to go and do some good in the community. I'm going to do some volunteering. I'm going to hang out with my sister. And just those little reminders are things that actually are very human things, but that we are able to share with the whole company by just a little nudge in teams, which pings us at 12 o'clock on a Friday. Um, another of the things that we do and I like to do and I showed you is sending praise like I did to Juan. You can't say to someone, oh, I like your new haircut, but you can send them praise or a quick message on Teams. Form surveys, um, I showed you those already. And again, a great tool to be using and something we do at Avenard. We also have started doing things like watching videos and then coming into kind of a, what we call in business like a round table discussion and, um, you know, having a bit of that time to reflect as groups. Um, and then the next one, I think, taking charge of your career again, teleworking. It's a strange phrase, but actually I think that if we think about the fact that you as students and young people will probably make up like 50% of the workforce by 2020. So actually what we need to be thinking about is not seeing being in lockdown and quarantine as all like, oh no, we're all locked inside. How can we make the most of that as an opportunity? Where is this opening up our 
our experiences and there are some great online webinars there's also great content out there being shared by being shared by professionals being shared by people who are really at the top of their careers at Avenard, i think something that we really make sure we try and do using these digital tools is talk to each other and share information and actually if you are really interested in someone who has written a blog post or you see something on LinkedIn or even on Instagram and you think, oh, you know what, I'd really like to learn more. Often just sending someone a message, sending them an email is a good thing to do because actually you might be able to learn a bit more from those people. Often people will have 15 minutes to have a coffee with you, um, even now because it's online, maybe more time. Um, the next things, remote self-management, remote personal brand and remote teamwork and collaboration are all things that I think are really important. Personal um, time management is just a good thing to be thinking about in terms of doing work, collaborating with your colleagues, but then also having a break, making sure you stay on top of your work-life balance, using time in your day also to get outside and to use collaboration tools to communicate and socialize with others as well. And I think socializing can be in the form of quizzes. It could just be a quick coffee catch up. We are doing something with our graduates where everyone's going to be building like a robot online together on a call. And then we're going to be showing the little robots that we build with things in our house. Again, just a fun activity to do with a group of people. Um, and then I think making sure that you are working in a team and that you're not afraid of being on the camera, that you're not afraid of being in big groups. Again, this is all stuff that is very, very useful and very, very important now that we're all online and something that we really need to make sure we are sharing with our clients and that hopefully you as kind of young people can start to be doing as we're going through into the workforce, thinking about college applications and then going into kind of classroom workshops and things like that. Um, now, the last couple of things, um, remote emotional intelligence and social intelligence. Now, these I think are just accepting that everyone is an individual, that we are needing to accept that different people have different schedules even though we're all at home so sometimes you know if someone needs to go and look after their little sister during her lunch break or someone needs to go um you know and help visit their grandma do someone shopping then they might not be available from the nine to five hours that they used to be at Avenard and that's something that we as a workforce I think of really helping to support each other with and to understand each other and adapt um, to people being able to work and deliver really excellent collaborative creative ideas but also saying we understand that everyone's different and that when everyone's at home right now, this is a bit of a difficult time as well. And we've got the tools and technology to enable all of us to do a bit of work. And then like I kind of showed you with the file sharing, come back to it later and all be able to work as a good network and ecosystem without having to be sitting at desk at exactly the same time. Um, so hopefully that that makes sense. Um, now, I guess when we're thinking, is that, how are we doing for time? I don't have it. Uh, more, or less. more or less. Okay, so, so how, how much we more? Have, we still have uh, another five minutes, maybe. Great. Five. Yeah, oh great. Um, so when it comes to the kind of key things that I think are useful for collaborating in this new online world. I thought about some of them and I think these are the top ones. So who's who? When you are working in your kind of enterprise challenge groups and me in my team and Victor in his team will find it really important to basically divvy up roles and responsibilities, who's doing what. And then coming into that thinking about how you're communicating. Do you have a few different ways to communicate with each other? Are you using chat? Are you using a WhatsApp group? Are you using email? And also are you checking in with each other face to face? 
So we used to have at, with a client of mine a morning stand up every day and actually a really successful young enterprise team um, in the company program final were continuing to sell their product through the COVID-19 lockdown and they attributed a lot of that to their three times weekly Google Hangout meetings that they had. So again, a really good way of keeping in touch with people. We also in my team with Avenard have a 3 p.m. 15 minute coffee dial in session every day where people can, if they want to, dial in and speak to each other. Now, I think, again, keeping your end in mind, so keeping your goal in mind is really important. It can be difficult to stay on track when none of you are seeing each other day to day. Obviously, if you're working kind of more on your own without being in an office, you might your mind might go off in other directions. So just make sure that you do have your goal fully in your mind and that you're really aligned on it. So aligned is a word we use a lot at Avenard to kind of be moving forward as a business altogether in the same direction. And to do that, actually taking and sharing notes is a really good one, which we've discussed already and continuing to plan. But like I said at the beginning, being flexible and being agile with some of this as well. Um, and then like really all of this, just helping each other um, and making sure that you're supporting each other as well. Now, I think that that should be kind of where we wrap up in terms of collaboration. I have a little bit to say about presenting yourself with impact. Um, and if we've got, do we have a couple more minutes or shall I wrap yes. up? Yeah, let's make it a couple of minutes more. Yeah, OK. Um, so when it comes to kind of putting your collaboration into action, um, I think there's a couple of things that are really important. So more than ever, it's important that we ensure that the messages that your audience receive is the message that you want to convey. So telling your story with impact, really, even though you are not necessarily going to be sitting in a boardroom. How do you do that? Having a clear idea about your content and your structure, but more importantly than that, actually presenting and engaging with people. Don't be afraid of your camera, bringing in the human elements. I think something that's really important and that we at Avenard have really been kind of having to kind of keep saying to our clients is you've got these great tools and you've been collaborating to date. Now, actually, when it comes to presenting yourself online, you need to just it's difficult, but try and settle into it and act like you are like you are all together and like you are actually um, like it's like it's kind of real life because for now this is the way that business is moving and this is the way that everyone is communicating in big groups as well. So I think a couple of things in this like magic formula that we've been calling it is making it personal, keeping things authentic, keeping things simple, not using too much jargon and also repetition is your friend. So in terms of presenting online, I think that's something that's important because remembering that your message actually you don't want it to get lost and the simpler, the better. And with that, just then presenting yourself online, I think a couple of, I guess, housekeeping rules will be things like dress for the occasion. You wouldn't wear your pajamas in a classroom. So that's something at Avenard we always make sure we're kind of well presented. And then the virtual boardroom. So all the same things. If you're going into a boardroom or you're going into a lecture theatre or a classroom, you'd be on time or at least you'd try to be. Um, you'd be in a club. Are you in a quiet room? Do you have water? What's your Wi-Fi like? Just those types of things. We touched on this, but feeling confident in your role as well. So if you're presenting, make sure that you've done a bit of prep with people you're presenting with because online it can be a little bit more difficult than just in person. Have your camera on that. This is what makes it real now. It's nice to see other people. It's nice that I can see Salvatore and it's nice that I can see Victor today, not just hearing them like on the radio. 
And then like we've already talked about and like I've got now, set your background, make it a bit personal. It's a good talking point. Um, and yeah, with that, the last thing is show your passion. So I guess remember that so much of the collaboration that you're doing at school, that you're doing in the classroom, that we're at Avenard doing in the workplace relies upon us being human and being passionate and using the amazing tools that we have so that we can really, really make the most of that. So I think delivering all of those things and then just letting that kind of shine through with anything that you are that you're working on online, anything that you're presenting is really important. So what I've done is I'll just leave you with this checklist to take away and I'm sure we can share these slides after the webinar. And I will now hand over to Victor to talk you through kind of what's next in the workplace. Um, thanks all for dialing in. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel. Victor. Yes, thank you. That was great. Let's talk a little bit about sort of the future and, and what I'm working with and, and sort of my role here at Avanade as well. So I'm sharing my screen now, hoping that you can see it. Good. Yes. So first of all, my name is Victor Villén. I'm based out of Stockholm, Sweden. I've been a remote worker for many years now. Uh, my our Avanade's head office in Seattle, and that's where I have my management and most of my team. So. I'm working yeah, the nine hours time difference away. So I work from my home office all day. So for me, this is not the new normal. It's been my normal for quite some time, but for a lot of people, remote working is the new normal. And this presentation would have been very different if we didn't have the pandemic. The pandemic has made some changes to, or I would say it's speeded up everything. But as a global innovation lead for modern workplace, I'm looking into uh, what's happening within the collaboration space and what kind of new tools, what new technologies, what kind of new services, what new kind of new business models are out there. And I do everything from sort of writing code to working a lot with the, the Microsoft Teams engineering team around Microsoft Teams, how they can improve that product, but also integrating our solutions into Microsoft Teams. As Isabel showed you, sort of where you can have the chat experience, those kind of tabs where she had planner, but also bringing in applications in there. So that's Teams have an app store where you can build and publish applications to make your collaborations, uh, uh, collaboration store even more better. But as I said, everything has changed very fast and dramatically now over the last few months, I would say. And just a fun thing to take a look at some Google Trends or uh, interest over time for remote working, sort of in, in February, March, it's exploded. But as you can see, it's been something that's uh, been sl slowly growing over time and, and remote working is not something new but yeah we had to adapt very fast to that and and you, we can see here a quote from Jack Dorsey the Twitter CEO essentially he promised that we can you all our employees can work from home if they want to and we will continue that even after the pandemic Facebook had said the same thing a lot of other companies are saying the same thing uh, and there's also a lot of statistics and I, I've been working on remote working for quite some time and reading into research and we've been seeing over uh, this has been growing. It's not something new, as I said, but it's a new normal. But we also see that people are more productive remote working because you can connect much faster and also new modern times uh, uh, when uh, you, you want more freedom. You perhaps don't work, want to work nine to five with th those kind of things. That fits a lot of people much better. But also, as you can see here, the, the statistics on the lower right hand side actually that came out before the pandemic. And they say by 2028 in eight years, 73 percent of all departments will have remote workers. And I think that figure will be much higher now when we actually have accepted this. So why is this happening right now? Uh, oh, sorry, clicked one too many. Did I? No, I didn't. So uh, as I said, the number of remote workers has continuously been uh, growing over the last two decades or something like that. But we exploded now when we were forced to go home and everything was new to everyone. We had to learn new ways of working, new, uh, learn new ways to collaborate. And, and, and the num Microsoft, it was interesting to see their statistics on Microsoft Teams, for instance, the exponential growth they had over just a few weeks when they had to scale out the service because everybody wanted to work in Microsoft Teams or in, in similar services from other, other vendors. And we, I think we should be very fortunate. The technology is actually here. Uh, it perhaps sometimes us that, that, that didn't uh, uh, help speeding up things, but the technology can actually help us and it has helped us and specifically at Avanade. Uh, uh, and as we've been talking about, we, we do everything remote now. 
And as I mentioned, my, my office is in Seattle. I sit in Stockholm. I have my development teams in India. So I can work with them. And, and Isabel showed you how we can collaborate in a PowerPoint presentation, for instance. I can do the same kind of thing when we write in code with my development teams in India. But instead of having PowerPoint there, we use the Visual Studio Code and do collaborative writing code in the same file and looking at each, each other's check-ins just as we would sit sitting next to each other. So we can do that kind of collaboration as well. But the pandemic that's happening now has been the catalyst of speeding up things within companies and rolling these features out and, and making people adapt faster because they we had to. So, so that's why everything goes faster. So we would probably have expected this uh, this uh, many remote workers in, in seven, eight years. But no, we're here right now and we have to do the best we can. And it's a change and it will be permanent. We will not have, of course, we will go back. Some of us will go back to work. And I was actually in the office for the first time yesterday, with, uh, meeting up with some friends. Very few of us were allowed to go in there to meet up. We haven't met them for five months in, in person. So it was great going in there and just meeting each other before the summer, keeping social distance and all those kind of things. But, but that we will probably stay more at home, uh, work more from home. And there's a couple of, of figures and, and, and stay quotes from, from a different kind of report. So the, the fluid work uh, place, as uh, CBRE call it, uh, and people can work from home. And the, the benefit of that, they can work at any time as well. And they even predict by 2030, with all these self-driving cars and stuff like that, we can actually work in our car. So we might be commuting to work. If we still do commuting, then we work all that way. Uh, another in, one of my favorite reports, actually, it's a couple of years old. They updated it uh, now for the the pandemic, but it's called the declining cost of distance. And that brings in all the, the sort of macro economy into this as well. Uh, the per, so transporting go goods, uh, purchasing goods, etc., and information on people, that cost has dramatically decreased over the last uh, 10 years. We, for, we, we've seen people moving into the big cities so they can be close to the companies, etc. But what's happening now as well is people actually moving out of town, out of the cities, they're creating what they call the new villages because people want more space, they want cheaper housing. Uh, we can work remote, the technology is here to support us. So we see these kind of new villages actually uh, popping up here and there. And I have a lot of good friends that actually sold their really nice apartment downtown and bought a big house in the countryside. They can be outdoors whenever they want to, but they work just as fine from home. And also there are a lot of supporting data statistics that supports that uh, we have an increased productivity when we do remote working. Uh, but also uh, there's an expectation from a lot of uh, young persons, the millennials, as we call it, are coming into the marketplace and they want to work from home. They want to have that freedom and flexibility. And those employers who support that will, of course, uh, attract more, more uh, people and uh, that you will have more opportunities if you're open to that as well. So for instance, as I mentioned once again, we are I'm an honest global company. My head office in Seattle, I work a lot with Microsoft there. I used to travel quite a lot over to Seattle um, many times a year, but that would probably not be the same going forward. We all has adopted more to working using remote tools. But I, I must say, this is not without challenges. First of all, Isabel also mentioned that work-life balance, and that's probably the, the primary thing we need to think about. Uh, and I actually posted in, in a, a Twitter um, poll here from Donna Sarkar from Microsoft. Uh, she's an awesome community champ. Um, and it was fun to see when Microsoft started working from remote from home. First of all, they everyone tweeted about sitting in their pajamas and, and doing work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And that's fun for the first few days, right? But then you you need to if if you want to keep your work life balance, you need to essentially dress up as you go into the office. So you feel that you're in the work mode. Uh, and also what, what she said here, uh, so she she hoped to work less, but actually the the truth is that we you work more from home. So that, that's uh, very unfortunate. So you need to keep that work-life balance. And perhaps if it's nice weather, actually sun is coming through here, it was raining before, why don't you take a break and long walk or go out with the, your bike or something during the day? And, and that's what I do. I have a lot of late evening meetings and that fits my style. I like to go out when it's sunny, etc. Another very big thing is uh, we, there's a lot of predictions about loneliness and depression coming. That's something we need to take care of. Specifically, if you're looking into working as a group uh, or being a manager, you need to ensure that your people don't feel lonely. So camera on, as Isabel said as well, that it at least connects you a little bit more. 
have those kind of, I don't know, virtual uh, afterworks as we do as well, and those kind of things to keep, uh, keep you self connected. Another thing that's very dear to my heart, uh, and I'm, I'm being a little bit harsh here, so innovation will suffer. A lot of the innovation actually happens when you go to the coffee machine or you meet up or those some spontaneous discussions that come. So even though we might do predominantly remote working, it's a good idea to, to catch up and meet once in a while in, in different shapes of form. Over time, we will adapt to, to being more in, innovative using whiteboard, for instance, with other kind of tools. But, but there's sometimes you, you just need to, to bump into a colleague you haven't met for, for a while and, and, and bring your ideas together. So it's an experiment and time will tell exactly what will happen. So that's some of the sort of the research and data, etc. But let's take a look at some of the big trends and some of the big things we see uh, happening in specifically workplace around technologies and process, etc. And I love to take a look at sort of Gartner and uh, they predict the future. They have a lot of things. Uh, to say about that, and you shouldn't read too much into the, what you see on the screen here, but essentially they have what they call the peak of inflated expectations, and that's stuff that's really cool right now, but everything will fall down. Uh, once it's cool, then it will go down before we see that it actually gives us productivity. And I highlight a couple of things here, such as chatbots, that's sort of the, the peak at the peak right now. So everybody wants to do, build bots of different kind of shapes or form. And I, I will actually say this is from from last summer. I think it is uh, yes, the 20, or August, September sometime. I think that kind of chatbot and virtual assistants, those have been there are uh, down there now and going back up because that's something that we force now that we need those kind of tools much faster. We also see on the right hand side there. So enterprise video and collaboration and, and the cloud based services. That is the, the normal. That's an expectation we have right now. There's also some really cool stuff that I'm going to talk about on the left hand side that's uh, right now in sort of in, in, in the start of this. That's knowledge graphs and smart workspaces. That's something that will, I think that they will come sooner than, than, than Gartner expects. They expect five to 10 years. But given the situation we are now, those kind of research innovation will speed up. And for me, as I mentioned, uh, I think the office used to be a place where we went to work. But now in the future will be a place where we actually meet much more. We focus on those kind of meetings. And, and to be honest, when I went into the office yesterday, it was, kind of, it was uh, deserted, right? And we saw those rows of, of uh, tables and chairs, etc. It I almost felt depressed when seeing that. So I think those kind of, the, the, our offices will change, or even physically, into more kind of working areas where we actually can sit down and meet together instead of sitting in front of a in, in lines in front of screens and, and in our cubicles, so to say. So in our office, there will be a couple of things that's super interesting. And this is a personal passion of mine, uh, sort of the IoT revolution that's happening, all these smart, uh, cool new widgets that's coming. So I think the office will be full of these kind of things going forward, and not just our office, our homes as well. So if we take a look at the different kind of things that will pop up, I'm not going to read through them, but you can start on the, on the, on the middle here. So where we have sort of the, let me bring up the laser pointer, just a second. So where we have uh, oxygen and carbon dioxide monitoring. That's an important thing to understand. How is your environment there? And using that information to create the perfect environment so you feel energized, etc. And that in half an hour or so, I get a warning on my phone that it's uh, the carbon dioxide in my office is too high, so I need to get better ventilation in here because that actually affects the environment and everyone in there. So of course, if you have too much CO2, you will be drowsy, et cetera, et cetera. We have sort of a desk utilization monitoring. Who's sitting where? Uh, where are the popular seats? That's one, one thing we're actually looking into with quite a few clients right now to optimize the working place. So that desk next by the window, that is always too hot, for instance, to understand nobody sits there. Why do we even have a desk there? Understand those kind of things. There's so many thing, cool things we can do. Uh, also measuring sort of the plants, uh, how are they feeling? Uh, how can we work with them? We can uh, use beacons internally to understand where's the conference room I should be at. Uh, when I get into the office, it says to me, hey, your, your teammates are here, they're in, in this room over there. Why don't you go there and join them instead of me figuring it out? Or when I'm sitting, going in the elevator and click on going to floor three, or your meeting is on floor four, why did you go wrong? So those kind of things. And this will also, of course, go over to your at your home office, a lot of these kind of things will be consumed, are consumer products right now. Uh, and I'm super excited about that. We'll show you in a bit. 
we talked about the office, but this will also happen sort of in warehouses, in, in, in production facilities, etc. And, and one of the things we, uh, that's very, uh, we get a lot of asks about right now is what we have in the middle here. So the body temperature, temperature scans actually see if people have fever or not. So, but then we're getting into the borderline, what, what can we and should we actually measure? But there's things such as uh, the using RFID to tag goods or, goods or uh, detecting accidents, for instance. If we can have cameras that detect that there's a truck here that collided with someone or someone is, someone is injured, we can automatically call the emergence in those kind of things and make it even easier. And on the right hand side, we have drones and robots. That is uh, super cool. And we, we even built for a pharmaceutical co company actually a drone that flies inside their storehouse and do a, a nightly inventory of everything. And those kind of things. And, and we see that the, in retail stores, they have these uh, small actually drones that can fly while people are in the store and, and checking the different kind of shelves if, if it looks good, if there's missing uh, goods and, what, and whatnot. So there's so many things we can do with that. And as I said, this is a personal passion of mine. Uh, essentially, my whole home is uh, automated. Uh, as you can see, there's a couple of screens here. Just this on, on the upper left hand side is sort of my blinds that I have here. They are automatically going up and down based on the sunlight and heat, etc. The small um, light you see on, on the upper right, that is actually something I 3D printed and built myself. That's the lights that connected to, to my presence. And it's actually blinking red right now because I'm present presenting. So my kids can see that so they don't start playing the drums or whatever. So I do a lot of those kind of things and, and orchestration, everything from lights. When, when we leave the home, well, lights turns off. When we are on vacation, they automatically turn off and on and off. So it looks like we're home and the temperature optimize that all the time. Uh, and as I said, I think this will come because consumer product and, 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 it's, uh, and we expect that in our office as well. And that's sort of bridging what I say, we'll be connecting the digital and physical world. That, that would be much, much more interesting. And I actually made a mistake when I sh uh, shared my screen here. I need to share with audio. So let me just reshare the screen. It will take a second or two so we can actually see. I want to show you a really cool video here. Just give me a second. I always do that mistake. It's a small checkbox you need to click. So let's share again. And let's see here. Share, include system audio because we want some nice audio. And let's play this one. to show you how the digital and physical world will connect together. And some of the, the future research being done right now. unknown. Getting next direction. Turn left onto 15th Avenue. Okay, we'll stop there. The idea here is that we, we are connecting the physical things into our digital things and with something called wearables and even though it might sound like a consumer kind of thing but it's super important i think for the future of offices as well uh, as you saw in the middle there we had the the, the levi's jacket uh, and they teamed up with google and created that kind of thing where they integrate the sensors into the fabric in in uh, in the jacket so you can tap to to answer phones or get directions and those kind of things the glasses you see on the right hand side are the ones I'm wearing here. If I tap on the side here, it tells me the time. If I double tap, it starts the music and I can even, so they're headlet, a headset as well. So I can take my phone calls when I'm walking around in the house. It gives a small notification up here when I get an email message or a message. So it doesn't have to ping. My wife hates my phone because it pings all the time. So I get a small visual notification. Those kind of things make my life easier and will be in the future. But on the left hand side, it's a really cool a startup called Turnpike. They make these wearables for retail. And the idea here is that if you go into a store today, and of course you don't want the, the sort of the cashiers looking down into an iPad or the ones meeting you looking into an iPad, 
and when they get notifications or pull up their phone or whatever. The idea with these bracelets is to be se uh, sending subtle uh, sort of uh, vibrations or whatever if they need, we need to call upon them. And they all they work together with H&M as an, an example, where they have in their stores, in the dressing rooms, etc., small buttons you can click, and then the staff will get notification on the wrist without being disturbing or, or annoying to, to the, the client they're talking to. But also being able to monitor where they are in the store. There's some person missing in the cashier or in the, at the dressing rooms and those kind of things to get that monitoring to make much more better uh, customer experience, but also employee experience. So we will see a lot of these kind of things coming going forward. Uh, as I mentioned, measuring all your workplace, etc. I back to my personal hobby. So my have I have an IKEA stand this, this desk here that I actually hacked so I can control that via my phone or going up and down. So I know how much I'm standing or sitting and those kind of things. But the important thing is there is the data inside that understanding what kind of behaviors your employees have or the people in the workplace. Do they prefer standing or sitting down? And how much are they moving, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, or what seats are even occupied? So there's a small under my desk here, a small motion sensor, sensor that sees if if I'm actually present at the desk or not. Those kind of things. You saw in the introduction video, and you you, you probably tested it as well, sort of the Hololens, and that's one big thing that is coming. Uh, I say coming up, it's not really here yet, but we are doing projects for clients, and I would say uh, also explain why it's not really ready for prime plan yet. But first of all the mixed reality, which is a combination of the virtual reality and the, the augmented reality. I think that's a super interesting way where we can superimpose or add objects into the real world. This is an example for a client that we made where they have these huge turbo compressors. They need to do training on them. They need to look how they look inside sometimes uh, without picking them apart, etc. Then we can use a combination of these guides, as you can see here, how they can guide them through. How do you pick this big piece apart? In what order do you do that? Uh, they can also call for help uh, from external. Think about remote working. Uh, so the expert might not be uh, near you when you need to fix this machine. So you can call them in so they can see what you see. That's a perfect example of how we can extend our reach and, and make really compelling uh, uh, working uh, uh, environments for, for employees, uh, etc. Uh, there's a lot of companies that try this. Uh, I, still, it's very expensive to work with. These headsets are quite uh, heavy. I've, I've used actually one in my office here for a couple of days to see how I can work with it in an office environment, putting screens on the walls and stuff like that. But it, it is it, quite tough to have that on your head right now. The the game gaming industry is really starting with this with Oculus Rift, for instance. And not until essentially everyone has a 3D game or a virtual game at home, I think that's where we will get it to, to, our, um, to our companies and our working environment. It needs to go into the consumer grade before it's actually working. But there are some really good use cases for it uh, when such as these uh, turbo compressors here, because they're super expensive, there, there aren't many experts on, on these kind of uh, compressors. So it makes sense to, to do that kind of investment. But with that said, I don't want to scare you away. You should absolutely try these kind of things because that is the future. It will come. It's just a matter of time. Just so as Microsoft tried with tablets and stuff like that, it didn't work until Apple came out with the perfect product, like with the iPad, etc. They perfected it, but also they had the right timing. Uh, this we do this for a lot of training, and 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 uh, also I said put in here. So can this be the solution for the remote innovation kind of things? How can we actually? meet more uh, or meet virtually with just a, not just a camera but actually meet with avatars and whatnot so a lot of this or i would say all of this is based on data without data this would be nothing and and artificial intelligence machine learning are two key features uh, going forward and understanding i would say uh, loving data would be one of the key features or, or key asks for for everyone nowadays you need to understand data you need to love the, that data exists and how to work with that data and an understanding sort of how ai and machine learning etc works because that will be the future how we may take decisions how we take those mundane tasks off our shoulders and put it into hands of a system or a service or something i mentioned knowledge graphs when i showed the, the gartner report and knowledge graphs are I believe the true future of everything um, when it comes to, to um, future work and future uh, offices, etc. 
And the idea behind a knowledge graph is that we get everything, all the signals in from our offices, our physical, physical workplaces, from our uh, databases we have with our products and etc., with our customers, and then we connect all the dots. And we connect all these dots together and, and put that into a context. That means that we can ask smart questions across everything and understand and, and find correlations we couldn't do before. And with these correlations, we can take smart decisions or have some automated system or service or process take those smart decisions for us and base our business process on. And this is something that start, started to happen right, um, I would say not right now, I think right now customers are asking for this or our point of view on this, but it's not something new. This is exactly how uh, companies such as Facebook and Twitter have been working. They use these knowledge graphs to connect everything to give you their perfect recommendations. And even the best example are all these ads you see. As soon as you do something on the internet, it takes two seconds and you see commercial for that in, in Facebook, right? And that's based through knowledge graphs because they understand the data, they understand you, your behaviors, and they connect the dots. And if you can connect these dots, then you can present this information in different ways. It might be the traditional through web interfaces, uh, email or in the phone, but also through virtual assistants such as bots, etc. I mentioned uh, extended reality, uh, show notifications in the glasses like this, or even notifications. So everybody probably hate the notifications on the phone today. You just swipe them in ways because there's so many. But if we understand what notifications you're interested in, so then we can send you the right notification at the right time. So there's no point in sending me notification right now because I'm presenting, I'm not going to pay attention to that. So if we could understand, okay, you're presenting now, I'll send it in five minutes instead or after your presentation when you actually have time over. So those are the kind of things we see uh, happening right now and we see these knowledge graphs being sort of the DNA of the of all enterprises going forward. Good. Let's fi finish this up with one thing. I'll touch on it briefly. Uh, the data is important, but also super important to understand what we use data for. Uh, if we start measuring uh, body temperature, to, for instance, what do we do with that data? Uh, and how do we present that, how we store that data? So everything around digital ethics, as we call it, is super important. That should be also one key skills. You are responsible for when you take in that data and store that data and work with that data, that is not used for, for um, purposes it should not be used for. So this is something you should always be asking yourself, uh, are we collecting the right data? How are we storing it and how, who have access to that data? So you need to build that into the systems, the processes and the businesses you're doing. For instance, at Avanade, we have a hotline that we can call anytime and say, hey, I don't think we're doing the right thing here. And that will take, and then we have a process that actually takes care of that. We have seen how uh, a lot of companies say, yeah, we, we, we will not make these services available to uh, governments or, or military and those kind of things because they don't want that AI to be, to be used in that, specifically around face detection. There have been a lot of discussions around that, what companies are selling uh, face detection and to what are the customers there, for instance. So that's something you sh should bring into your discussion. So finally, what's next then? I think that is all in your hands. Do you decide what's next? what kind of ventures you, you're going into and what you do, uh, what ideas and innovations that's in there. And all we saw Gartner was doing was predictions. They don't know exactly what's going to happen. They just have predictions. So I'm really looking forward to see new things coming over the next decades with new innovations that we had no idea would come. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really, really tuck. So Mikke, as you <laughs> used to say, as you used to say in uh, in uh, in in Sweden, tak yes. so Mikke. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, a couple of points for you. In the meanwhile, for anyone who wants to uh, make any questions, please use the live events Q and A that you can uh, definitely put out there. Uh, your questions, uh, but a couple of ideas that I had out there. The first one is. Thank you so much, Victor, uh, for sending me all those gadgets. So I want to try it <laughs> because I trust you, but but I like to try to try all of those. First of all, uh, second, um, I mean, especially the ones we put the li red light for the kids not to enter. That's yeah. a cool one. And I think we share the same challenges with our wives about 
how much time we spend with our phone. So even if I don't wear glasses, it's a good occasion to, to do the transition. Uh, but let me go back to Isabel. Isabel, you know, uh, over the past three, four months, our lives have been completely disrupted. Uh, working remotely, it, it initially was a challenge, but it was an exciting challenge as well. At least here at uh, JA in Europe, because we were preparing for this uh, European Enterprise Challenge that is starting next week, and we are just on the road to it. Uh, but we had teams in different countries who needed to continue work together. Uh, we had uh, the, the event, and this is something that is a challenge, uh, should be hosted by JA in Greece. So I think that feeling of being in Greece, we cannot really replace by, by working remotely, definitely. Uh, but thanks to Microsoft Teams and thanks to Avana who has supported us in implementing it, we've been able to do it. One of the things I like it, we started doing using uh, uh, Teams to have a virtual coffee breaks with a team. And then with our CEOs in our 40 countries, uh, you know, uh, it was uh, pretty, pretty nice uh, to also leverage and try to capture that innovation that Victor was saying. You might miss that innovation that comes up at, at, at the coffee, at the coffee machine. Uh, but we also talk about teams, not only because we use Microsoft Teams to do that. We also created a joint team with Avanad. We partnered with Avanad to virtualize our event, so it was good. But talking about challenges, what is the challenge number one, in your opinion, Isabel, when it comes to working together, working remotely? It's a good, it's a good question. I, I think that, I think one of the big things is making sure that everyone who is working is able to use and access and enjoy the new way of working. Um, I think that what you said about it being exciting and a challenge to work from home and what Victor said about it being, you know, often people now choosing to work from home is all very, very true. But that's only that's only good as long as we can all work to ensure that everyone in the organization is happy and working in an effective, productive way. Um, because I think that what's really important when we're all working from home is that we're able to keep the momentum going um, and that to Victor's point about losing creativity and innovation, I think that there's, there's a risk there and um, which is why things like you say virtual coffees and making sure that we are breaking down the boundaries with you know hierarchy and still talking to our leadership and doing having little uh, smaller conversations like you'd have by the coffee machine it's important so that we don't lose that because I think losing creativity could be a risk otherwise. Indeed, thank you so much. Uh, and, you know, our young entrepreneurs, the ones who are competing also for the Digital Innovation Award of next week of Avanad. I mean, uh, we will select the best for mentoring opportunities. You saw the video at the beginning of this uh, of this event. Uh, we'll get the cash prize, but we'll also get mentoring opportunity, opportunity of visibility. We'll work with 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 Avanad. Um, it's a tremendous experience. Those one who have gone through it, they really like it. Also, our youth, our youth that put together the startup, they needed to. They were forced to work uh, remotely. They were forced to bring their their startup. To move that to move that forward. So my big applause goes definitely to them. You get it to the end line. You've won your fi national finals, and now you are competing at the European at the European uh, level. Uh, at the European level, yes, we cannot bring you to Greece, unfortunately. But let me thank the fantastic world, the Junior Achievement Greece, that has been working with us and the Junior Achievement uh, Europe JA Europe team, who have been working together to make this possible. Always about challenges because you know everybody imagines when we closed our eyes, we were for 10, 10 seconds we were imagining the um, the work of the future, the world of work of the future. Now, again, what is the main challenge that you, Victor, you see 
when it comes. You talked about data, you talked about um, office space, devices, but if you have to choose one, one we really need to concentrate about. No, I, I would I would actually go back to the, the, the very simple thing, work-life balance, and, and uh, as being a manager as well, that's what I've seen over the, uh, even though, let's take one step back, even though we are very a tech company, we understand tech, we understand how to use Teams, and we are, I would say, we're pretty good at that. But even that, so when I went into the office yesterday, and it was so, uh, one of my advisees was so glad to see me. We actually could see, and the first thing that happened was that thing we stand up by whiteboard, or some random discussion we had uh, that came out of nowhere. Uh, so that meeting uh, that we actually do that, but then also back to the work-life balance. I've seen too many people working too much right now, and uh, I don't think it's healthy in the long run. So we need to understand that. So it's sort of, put all the technology aside and all the data aside and everything, it's up to you. And then you had that in your presentation, Isabel, as well, plan your day and do those kind of things. And uh, we, we, it's not worth it working too much, uh, even though we have all the cool gadgets and, and yeah, it's like throwing stones in a glass house in here because I, I really am very passionate about the stuff I do, so I probably work too much. But yes, you can see that going out over to your family and those kind of things if you do that. So it's super, that work-life balance, no matter what happens, uh, your life is more important, your health is more important. So uh, I think that that is, would say, that's my main challenge. Uh, and I think that the biggest problem we will see coming out of this, uh, all the remote working, etc. Indeed, no, thank you. This is a very important point that you make. I mean, working remotely is nice, it's fun. I've been doing that for the past 13, 13 uh, years now. Uh, at that time, you might agree with me, we did not have all the tools that we have today. Yeah. It was even more difficult. But working remotely was also difficult for me because I was used to travel between 150 and 220 days a year. So mm. in reality, I never had a real office. My office was really my laptop, my phone. I'm bringing it together. But work-life balance is important. It is important, especially working remotely. What we don't want to is that we're getting out of the COVID-19 virus and there is this virus of burnout. No, mm. not at all. This is not healthy for us. This is not healthy for the company that we work with. But it, there, is, there's net, there, there is a need of having this curiosity for testing new things. I think this is the right moment and especially the young people that are here in, in this event with us, there is the curiosity to test, to pilot new tools that are out there. No? I mean, oh, every day I, I log in on, on, on Microsoft Teams, I have a lot of um, um, notifications actually that comes to me on, on my different news on what's new for Teams. Just today, you know, we have new new features that will will be released will be released soon, especially for our educators in which they can create definitely more and more on, on um, virtual rooms, uh, more people to, to be shown. So there will be much more uh, interaction. There is to, there need to be this curiosity of being at the up to date with what's going on, because so many things are happening out there and we cannot be out of this mainstream, this main river. So one of the advices that any of you, maybe Isabel, you want to give to the young people about how to continue to learn in this learning path, even if you are now transitioning from your educational uh, um, uh, path to your world of work, to the entrepreneurs, what would you tell the young people on this continuous learning? I think this goes back to something that I was talking about um, when I was talking about teleworking and the fact that even though we have locked down, actually online, our world has really opened up in some ways and that there's a huge amount of resources out there online. There's a lot of content and it goes and it can be even to give a trivial example of if you think about if many of you use Instagram, all of the personal trainers and the workouts and the chefs that have spoken up and said, hey, look, cook with me, come work out with me. Those things might have been really 
expensive before and I think there's a lot out there that's really interesting whatever you're interested in really useful will really help you learn that is now widely accessible and much more accessible than it was before I think people also have actually if we're thinking about work-life balance and structuring your day thinking about okay I don't need to be working for you know 12 hours a day I need to make sure I have some time and even if I'm then still using the computer or even if I'm still you know researching things on my phone I'm actually able to think about using that time for me to access those resources to read things that are separate from my studies and read things that are separate from um my, well for me from my job and actually to go that to be successful in that transition now from school and college to the workplace is that's a really important thing to be doing to be kind of broadening your horizons reading and learning from all of the cool content that's out there at the moment more than ever before i guess thank you thank you isabel uh, victor you also been working remotely uh, for quite a long time now as you as you said um, would you have imagined that at this point in time we would have been here? Are we going too slow? Are we going too fast? Where where are we? If you go back at 10, and also in this case, you close your eyes, you go back 10 years, you go back 10 years and say, well, let me see, in 2010, I, how did I imagine the world of work of 2020? And where do we stand in that yeah, so part of your imagination? Uh, that's a really good question and to be honest in being me I think we're going too slow I imagine we were going we would be way ahead of this where we are right now uh, and I think that comes back to what you said about curiosity and that that is sort of the key thing to both thrive and survive in this landscape I think if you have that curiosity and never give up I think that's 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 what you need to do but I always had that curiosity I've been all always been at super passionate about tech and those kind of things and and yes I, I do have everything all the switches and stuff in my house is automated my wife doesn't really think that's the best idea ever and that you need to control everything via their phone and those kind of things but that that's me that's how i drive and and many of my ideas that i had both at an odd but also when i was running my own business for for many years uh, was sometimes a bit uh, ahead of time uh, one example i can tell you exactly what it is uh, but but and I had an idea for a couple of years that I presented at Avanade and nobody listened. But right now it's super important. I thought it was important three years ago but, and I pitched that, but now it's coming. And But the, the thing is about that, that's my curiosity that dro drove that kind of thing. But also don't give up on your, those ideas that you have and you need to keep pushing. And that's the way, as I said, it's up, all up to everyone out there to, to come up with new ideas. If you have an idea, don't let the first sort of um, uh, wall be in your face and, and climb over that wall and, and try to, to, to work around that obstacle or those persons will get more inspiration and find find your place for your idea. And the curiosity will drive that but, and don't give up on your ideas. D don't give up to your ideas. Don't give up to your idea. This is what we, we really teach in our different programs at Junior Achievement, right? This is one of the skills, you know, this resilience that we teach to the young entrepreneurs. And this is a lowered many of the participants of those competitions to go through these tough times over the past few months. Mm. Don't give up instead. Um, so I, if I go back to Isabel, there was a, a question also in the chat box that is moderated by Iris Lapinski uh, and Iris is uh, our uh, Director of Innovations. Thank you so much for uh, all your support, Iris. And Isabel, it was, can we integrate Teams with SharePoint? Uh, it's obviously it's, uh, it's one of the things how, how we, it's it's a good experience it's uh, it's mm. facilitate the work and that yeah absolutely so the way that I like to often describe it is if you think about teams as the cool sexy communication and collaboration platform that sits in front of SharePoint and actually what is SharePoint SharePoint is like a big 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 filing system and more than that but actually what we are doing when we are saving files in teams is we're putting them in SharePoint so when we um, when we introduced and roll out teams with our clients what we have usually done is what's called a SharePoint migration first 
and so all of their folders that you might usually see in your file explorer will have been put on SharePoint. What does that mean? It means that they're online in the cloud and they're sort of accessible to everyone, like I showed you with the file example in Teams, wherever they are, OK? So yes, absolutely, that's a good question and they do, they work together really well. And I think it's actually a very good example of how you are using this very actually quite complex filing system, which is SharePoint, which has a huge amount of um, potential. And then you can bring it right back to Teams and actually collaborate and communicate in quite a fun, simple way that even your mum could learn to use if you taught her properly. I love that. <laughs> I love it. Have fun. Well, the people knows that I, I, uh, I, try as much as we can to have a very fun environment at work as well. Uh, but uh, I do because I have also a fantastic team. Uh, yes, Microsoft Teams, we're using that, but I'm talking about the JA Europe team. Let me thank uh, all of those who have been working to uh, produce this event from Wanda Franciski to uh, Julia Naeve to Minna Mellery from Diana Philip and Davide Coppaloni and Iris. Uh, they're all there and Cristina Velkoska and, 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 and Laura Rossi and Cesar Jimena and Gokturk Bazar. And I hope I'm not forgetting any one of the core team. Then when you are a small team, uh, obviously everybody contributes to that. Everybody contributes to an event like this one to make it successful, hope to make it fun. We talked about imagination. We closed our eyes at the beginning. I hope that we started with this initial video. We imagined the future. We had a great learning experience. We learn, we live, we breathe the passion and the innovation that we will bring to the European Enterprise Challenge 2020 next week, virtually hosted in Greece. So thank you so much. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you to the to to, to all the, the uh, all of our teams, and thank you to our participants. Never give up. Bye, everyone.